Good evening, welcome to another episode of On The Spot, and uh, we're going to continue doing, uh, continue this uh, robot here. Sorry, it's been a little while, maybe a week and a half or so since I've uh, come back to doing this painting, kind of busy. Uh, but uh, welcome back, and if uh, anybody who just subscribed to my channel, uh, thank you for um, joining me. So, and basically, what I do on on the spot is basically you just follow along as I'm working on a painting. So, okay. So it's really kind of, <laughs> you know, we just I just work on it as I as I go, and then just I go from there. So. A lot of these are inspirations that I've had um, from, really, I've, I've kind of gone a little bit of the history of it. Um, a few episodes back when I talked about when I was younger, I started doing these robots, and I had one picture, actually, I never finished. And, uh, you know, it was like, you know, in your junior high, and you, you start something and you just you want to go back to it and you never really do and, and that's basically the whole premise of what Age of Robotica is is that something that I had a vision of and it wasn't until I did a commission work it was a western town and all that was really um, done out of my head you know just completely and it gave me the kind of motivation and confidence I needed to actually be able to do bigger paintings and pictures out of my head. Because prior to that, I was always doing watercolor from a photograph or something like that. And I just I didn't really I didn't really <clears throat> use concepts out of my own mind and my imagination, which I feel is my strongest. Point, you know that I could be a better artist that way when I come out of out of my mind and then so that's kind of what this is what is if you guys are just joining me or just figuring out what I'm drawing or why am I painting robots and also that I was fascinated in 12th grade I took a machine shop class and I really enjoyed it but I never pursued it you know I just you know I wasn't nothing to you know write home about I guess I wasn't really that great I mean it, I did okay you know I made some stuff over there on you know machine shop class but I wasn't say I was somebody that was as a natural or skilled at that but the fact that I had the confidence to do, um, you know, some some work that he told us to do as projects, you know, was encouraging. So, and I kind of like to almost as if I'm recreating with through my watercolor paints. You know, I'm giving that illusion of metal. So, there's the quick kind of brief history of what this is about and if you're just joining along so I don't know if you guys anybody who's subscribed to me is wondering what what I'm painting or why I'm painting it but that's that's kind of giving you the the um, the inspiration part why I choose to paint what I'm doing so Uh, a lot of times I just pull different colors and pulling different paints. I'm kind of working more, trying to get the almost blues. And he's almost getting almost like it's if the metal is, you know, kind of dark, really dark tone. And... Again, I don't use any black paint, so I just a uh, mixture of red, yellow, and blue, you know, 
and then I can create those tones if I need to. So, so you, you guys are just following along. I mean, you're just seeing how the process works, you know. A lot of times there's, you know, there's a lot of different detail, a lot of different things going on, you know, we just, as any artist, you, it just doesn't happen, like, right away, it takes, it takes some time, it takes progress, it takes going over the, uh, maybe a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking involved, how you want to do your next step, what do you want to do, what's your next, uh, What's your next step in your your painting? So there's a lot of a lot of things involved, and uh, uh, also a lot of frustration sometimes. Uh, you know, I think artists don't really maybe really focus on that part because as you you have an idea of what you want to do in your head, and sometimes it just doesn't doesn't really come out on the paper or the vision isn't quite what you what's really happening is not quite what you wanted but sometimes those things you didn't expect or didn't plan on they, those things actually turn out to be your best qualities of your painting so I just want to encourage you with that and uh You just you just learn as you go. I I hope to encourage anybody who's watching, who's uh, maybe just started doing watercolor, to be patient with the medium. Uh, to you know use uh, whatever colors you you know the the. the you know the best watercolor paper, and try to get the best watercolor pa paint. That's that's what was really suggested to me early on, and it it did wonders for me. I, th I think it really branched out my uh, artwork when I heard that and I took that advice. So I'm just kind of giving that to you because uh, you you find frustrations when you have the product, the quality of your. Uh, paintbrushes or the quality of your paper or the quality of your paints isn't so good you're going to you're going to figure you're going to think it's yourself and that may not be entirely true it it's you know you're fighting with what you have your materials but if you have really good materials you're going to find it be a, a lot easier to actually work with you know now you may notice I work kind of dry I don't really um do wet because I like to add those little details. This is, to me, this is the excitement part. This is where it all kind of happens, you know, to, to be able to, uh, to add these little details to the painting. So it takes a while. So a lot of times you may see people doing time lapse, and the reason why they do time lapse is because it does take a while. <laughs> And I, I'm going to have to. I I'm really been thinking about it more and more. I haven't really done uh, as many time lapse videos, and uh, I want to try to get back to that because I just love that. See, everybody can watch the whole progress of a painting over time. Where here you're you're kind of watching it as I go. And maybe as I get better with my editing, uh, my quality, I'm still very new at this uh, filming my artwork. I guess honestly I would say I'm not an amateur as much in my artwork as I am <laughs> making videos. But, you know, I'm learning and I'm, I'm growing. And so you guys might have seen the progress of how uh, hopefully where I've come in the last five or six months when I first started my first video you know it was very shaky very I've, I've gotten some new equipment I got some stuff to where I'll be able to do better and you know it's it's always a 
progress of making it look better or whatever, but my art is something I've been doing for a long time, and you know that I have, I have, I, I know I'm able to do. But as anybody or any artist, we always have a kind of a self-doubt, like, is this turning out right, or is this going to look good, or, you know. A lot of times we are the hardest critic is ourselves. You know, we look, because we look and we see uh, flaws where other people wouldn't, but, but that's also our strength, too. So, and also I've been told not to, you know, when you're doing a painting, you don't want to say, oh, this, this is, you know, this is bad, this is bad. You want to not focus on that, you know. If somebody brings it out or points it out and you kind of talk about it, but if no one brings it up and if somebody really likes it, you don't want to bring up any of the qualities that you think that was not as good, so... Because, you know, a lot of times we're looking at what we could have done better or what we need to do better. But we're, we're constantly learning. We're constantly uh, making directions in the right, right, uh, going in the right direction, I guess you would say. So, so right now, if you've seen me in the other videos, the other... I'm doing robots, I'm just adding the little details. And remember, the darker, in some ways, the darker actually brings out these little lines, these little highlights actually bring out the, the lighter tones and the lighter, lighter colors or the white of the paper and make it look like there's a reflection or, or, added, or I added white to it, but I never did. And that's the uh, that's the cool cool thing of watercolor. You can actually uh, manipulate the paper and make it look, and uh, that has a lot to do with texture and details and time. So, I mean, a lot of you guys are watching this video. I, I don't expect you guys to go. Okay, I'm going to go paint a robot. You don't have to paint a robot, but if you know you're if you want to, you go right ahead. But I'm just saying, uh, you can paint whatever you want to paint. Don't let your um, intimidation of the medium really hinder you. So, and let your imagination just grow. I mean, because honestly, if you have the imagination to do it, then do it. So that's, that's I, I I'd always encourage, or I've been trying to encourage every time I do a video. I just say, please, uh, don't be limited to what you know you think you can't do. Just do it and and grow, grow with it. So and that's a uh, very important. So okay. So I'm adding those little details to the uh, to there, so we're just making it kind of bringing in those details along. So and part of the reason why I do all this is because I'm trying to get that. Uh, I want to have it like a 3D element to where it looks like the uh, you know the face, the the helmet is. It's not exactly a helmet, that's the head. Uh, the robot is rounded or the shape of it, so we bring in those details there, so. Alright, again, I, this, all this is going to take time, uh, practice, uh, just you, maybe you come back to my video next time, maybe I'll add a little more detail, a little more uh, work into the project. But I just want to say thank you for joining me tonight. If you enjoyed this uh, video, I enjoyed making it. I enjoy painting. I I always have and hope uh, 
hope the quality is getting better each time. So I just want to thank you for joining me on the spot, and uh, hope you have a good night. Thank you.